Hey Musos, how are you doing? Um, I'm going to talk about a subject that's pretty dear to me. I use this all the time, songwriting, improvising, chord substitutions, borrowed chords, and modal interchange is the one I'm really going to focus on. Um, but it all kind of falls under a similar blanket there. So um, yeah, we'll run through them. So easiest way I can explain, you know, chord substitutions or chord borrowing is if you have a basic progression, let's say we have a one, four, five in the key of C, which is CFG. <laughs> All those chords are diatonic, which means they naturally exist within that key. Um, if we take a chord from a different key that shouldn't be in there, it's going to spark a bit of interest in the sound because your ears perk up to it and you go, oh, that was interesting. It pulls you somewhere else. Um, and that's basically chord borrowing in a nutshell, right? So a really common thing to do is take one from a parallel key, which means instead of the key of C major, where our one, four, fives are all major chords, if we took it from its, its brother or sister, um, the C minor key, the one, four, fives are now minor. So instead of playing C, F, G, I could sub one of those chords out. I could go C major, F major, here's my sub, G minor, back to C. Or let's do a different chord, let's do them all. One, here's my sub on the four. Do a sub on the one, that'll sound interesting. Quite like that. Now I went back to the minor chord there, you could have resolved it to the major. Resolving to the one major. You know what I mean? So each one of those had a little bit of a spark to it rather than just your diatonic. Because your ears start to um, expect it. They start to get used to things, especially in you know Western music, you hear that all the time. Now, Blah, 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 you can do heaps of different things. There's tritone substitutions, there's secondary dominance, there's backdoor substitutions, there's so much different stuff that you can do for um, borrowing and, and substitutions themselves. But modal interchange is what I really wanna focus on today. It's a great tool, I use this all the time. A couple of steps to it, because you kinda of gotta understand your modes as well. Um, but really, really useful when you get this going. So let's keep in our key to C, right? So I'm gonna put a chart up for this as well so you can have a little um, reference for this. It's off a really good book. I will, I can't remember off the top of my head who the author of that book is, but it's all about chord borrowing and substitutions. It's got a few other concepts in there. Um, but yeah, let's go through it. And I've got a scale formula sheet that I've written up that I'll tag as well. So in the key of um, C, or any key for that matter, your Ionian scale, the formula for it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven just means everything's natural to that key, right? So in C, that would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There you notes of your C major scale slash key. Now, if you play them diatonically, the next one along, you'd start on D, play the same notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. That would be Dorian. So to give you a demo, C major, Dorian and D, Phrygian, they're all the same notes, every single one. I'm playing that diatonically. When you do your modal interchange here, you want to treat them off the same root. So for example, C major, C Dorian. Just pausing on those odd notes there. So Dorian, and I'll, I'll run through this quickly and then I'll come back and tail it. So Dorian has a flat three, a flat seven. Next one along Phrygian has a flat two, three, six, seven. Lydian has a sharp four. Mixolydian has a flat seven. Aeolian, which is your natural minor, has a flat three, six, and seven. And Locrian, which is your half diminished, has a flat two, three, five, six, and seven. Now, don't ask me how I remember that, just from doing it many times and teaching it many times. I've got a chart that I've written up for that as well, so I'll link that to, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. Um, okay, so understanding that's really important. Understanding the chords of all those modes help as well. But really, all you have to really think about is the first one and moving it along. I find it's a much better way to think of it. What I mean by that, in your key of C, the chords are major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So I'll run through them. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C. When you go to the sevens, you get C major seven, you get D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, that's the fifth. Careful of that one, A minor seven. We get B half diminished seven, or minor seven flat five, and then back to home, C major seven. Now, if you think about it, if I started, say, on the second chord or the second note, 
I'm starting on minor seven, right? It just laps around differently. So minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seventh, minor seven, half dim, major seven, and then back to the minor seven there. I'm just going across linear like that so you can see. Um, that's all well and good, but all the notes are the same, the chords are the same. Where the modal interchange comes into play is if we do that off the same root note. So if I play the first three chords, I'll do the first four, right? In C major as sevens. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven. All well and good. Now, if I was to do that as a Dorian outlook, right? I'm now thinking from the two chord, but starting on here. So now I've got C minor seven, different chord, right? I've got D minor seven. I've now got E flat major seven, right? And then I've got F seven. So all different chords. Once again, Ionian, Dorian. Very different, yeah? Different sounds. Technically, when you do that, you're actually in the key of B flat major. So if I started here, it'll look normal. Major, minor, minor, major, dominant. So when we borrow a chord, let's say we take a Let's do, I'll just, I'll do this really linear for a second so you can see it. Let's, this is an odd chord progression, but let's do a one, two, three in the key of C major, which would then be C major, I'm doing sevens by the way, C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, right? Just straight up the gun. If we do that in Dorian, we get C minor seven, D minor seven, E flat major seven. So instead of subbing all those chords out, let's then just pick one. So let's still think about being in the key of C. So let's go the third chord, right? So originally, major seven, minor seven, minor seven. Now, our third chord in Dorian was that E flat major seven. In major, in C major, it was E and it was a minor seven. So big difference there, have a listen. Listen for the sub, so we get C major seven. D minor seven, E flat major seven. That's nice, yeah. Have a listen again. Different. So that's a perfect example of it. That's from Dorian, but we could do this from any mode. I'm just going to keep the chords simple, and we'll go through a different progression in a second. So pick one. You know what I mean? Like just randomly pick one through. I'll just go. Okay, I'm going to pick Lydian. Sure. So let's have a look at Lydian now. Now it starts on the four. So if you think about your chord order, major, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, think of the fourth chord, so major, minor, minor, major, and we're starting there. So your chord order in Lydian is now going to be, if you think sevens, major seven, dominant seventh, minor seventh, half diminished seventh, they're the first four. In Lydian two, the scale formula, we have a sharp four, so we're going to get one, two, three, not F, we're going to get F sharp. So if I then run the chords for C Lydian, we get major seven, right? We get dominant seventh, we get minor seventh. Now the four was here before, but we're going to F sharp and we get half diminished. Right there, again. Interesting little sound, hey? So when we do this now, we start to get completely different tones. So instead of doing everything again, let's just sub one out. So what do we have that's different, right? Let's go back to C major. We got major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven. Let's pick one. Why don't we do the four? Cause that'll, you know, be quite jarring because it's, it's really strong. Um, so if we now go major seven, minor seven, minor seven. You can hear that, yeah? Really, really strong. That was that half diminished seven I put in there. Again. Because you've got a note that's out that you're starting on two and a different chord type. But just, you know, for experiment, let's pick another one. Let's sub the two out. So now we get major seven, dominant seventh, and then just resume back to the original key. That's nice. What if we kept the two chord Lydian sub and the four chord as Lydian sub? So now we get major seven, dominant seventh, minor seventh, half diminished. Know what I mean? And that really resolves nicely there which is cool too so you can see using these different modes you get some really interesting sounds um some that will really spark your ideas up too 
And, you know, when you do these subs, it's going to change everything. It's going to change your harmony. It's going to change your melodic options, blah, blah, blah. Um, so knowing your modal formulas are really important. So you know, you know, what notes to play. And also knowing your diatonic chord scale is important, major, minor, minor. And then if you're starting on, say, you know, the Dorian, you know, you start on that second order, second chord of the order. You're starting on the Aeolian, you're doing the six. It's the same order. You're just starting in different positions. I think that's a really um, big key. It's a big point of this stuff. So let's take a different progression. Let's take something that's, you know, quite popular, something you'd see all the time. Um, this is like a two, five, one. So for example, in C, our two chord, we'll do all minor sevens, all seven, sorry. First one's a minor seven, right? D minor seven. Then we'd get a G seven. I'll keep playing them like this. And home. Should be nice and easy to see. I'm just using, you know, basic bar chords. Um, so let's pick a mode. What haven't we done? We did Lydian, we did Dorian. Let's do, the Aeolian is going to be like, you know, the counterpart. That's the parallel key. Let's do the Phrygian then, yeah? So, yeah, this is a good one. I like this one. I do this all the time. So your Phrygian has the formula 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. So think about the ones that are the same here. So obviously the one's the same. They're both Cs in terms of just single notes. The 2, though, in major it's a 2, and Phrygian it's a flat 2. So that's going to change our, you know, tone, our tonal center for that chord. Um, the five's the same though. So those notes will be the same, but we've got to then refer to the chord order and go, okay, well, Phrygian's the third. So technically the first chord of Phrygian is a minor. That's different. And I'll do the same progression just in a Phrygian context. So in Phrygian, we would have minor, that's the third. Then we would have the major. Then we would have the dominant. And then we would have your minor, seven, and then we would have your half diminished, and then back to home. Quite a nice progression, actually, hey? Um, and it just gets you thinking in different methods, too. It's really nice. So let's pick one of those out of there. I'm going to pick the flat two because it's the most intriguing just, you know, to my head when I think about it. So if we start on the two now, we're thinking of starting on D flat, right? And also, too, my bad, that one actually should have been a major seven. So D flat major seven. Now let's just use that as our sub, go back to C, G7, and then back to C major 7. All right. If I do that a little bit more close, close quarters too. And you get three, like seven chords there. You get a major 7. Sorry, I played a major 7 before. A dominant 7, I should have said. And a major 7. So we get D flat, major 7, G7, C major 7. Interesting. Um, you could do other things too. You could sub out, say, pick another one. Like, what if you subbed out, say, the two chord like we did, but what if we subbed out the G as well? So go through Phrygian and go, okay, find the G. We've got to find out where that sits. Um, and when we do it, we've got to go, all right, so we're starting on C. We know G is the fifth, but go through the order. Go, okay, minor, major, dominant, minor. There's that diminished, half diminished, like we said before. So we go major seven. Right, and then we go up to G half diminished. Back to there. So I've now got, say, the two chord in Phrygian. I've got the five chord in Phrygian, but I've got the one chord in Ionian. So you can get these really nice sounds, um, and you can run those as arpeggios too, you know, like. chart you could run that over the top so modal interchange there's heaps of ways you can go with it um trial and error too until you find tones that you like but i think the two main important things are understanding your modal formulas and also as well understanding your chord scales you can go through like that as an exercise and go my chord scale in ionian major minor minor major dominant minor half diminished major then go through and do it in dorian and go okay Minor seven, minor seven, major seven. Careful of the flats and the differences, and that's where knowing the modal formulas will um, come into play too. So yeah, I hope this gives you a bit of a look into modal interchange. Any questions, pop them down below for me, um, and I'll get back to you as well. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I'll post more videos like this. I hope this gives you a little look into it. Heaps of stuff you can do with this. It's kind of endless. You'll find different things that you like, different players. You know, might, they might go to that Dorian flat three all the time. I tend to do this one. See if you can figure out what this is.
nice sounds, but it just drags your ear there because you know it's not so typical. So yeah, hope you enjoy that. Have fun with it, play around with it. I'll pop the two little charts I was talking about on the screen somewhere so you can refer to them. Makes a little bit more sense when you got the visuals, but um, yeah, go for your life, have fun.